Hey ladies and gents, I wanted to make this video as it's been a little while and give you guys an update on uh, what's been going on since we installed the Maggie and up, just update everyone on where it's at what uh, and what performance builds Brian with the performance builds and I have been getting up to with uh, development on both of our Maggie's. So if you've been following along and waiting for update videos on the Maggie, let me know by smashing the like button and subscribing if you haven't already. It'd be much appreciated. So let's get into it. Okay, so that pull that you saw was on the 93 octane file from 034. The Maggie came with a 75 mil pulley, and that was with my 194 crank. So that makes for a, like a 2.59 pulley ratio. And just for reference, our stock 1320 blower came with a 2.56 pulley ratio. It's pretty close. So, anyways, the that pull was from second gear into fifth, and kind of as close to a quarter mile pull as possible in the winter conditions that everything would allow for. And it friggin' felt awesome. Smooth and pretty powerful. So I had, lo I had logged that run, of course, because I log everything. And this is what I saw for IATs. So I had a stock Maggie intercooler in bank one and the aftermarket performance intercooler in bank two. So at the beginning of the pull, the aftermarket cooler was doing better than the stock cooler. Then near the top of the third gear, we see the temperatures cross over. So this was interesting. But then as we get through the fourth gear, the slope or the rate of the temperature rise of the intake air temps slows down and both level off at the end of fourth and all of fifth gear. Like, uh, and here like a five or six degree Celsius difference between the two at the end. So that's close enough for me. I have never seen any log with a 1320 blower do that. The temperature always keeps rising so long as the throttle is at 100%, especially at more aggressive pulley ratios. Never like this where it just stops rising, even though the throttle is still at 100%. And so that was interesting data to collect. Uh, a far cry, quite frankly, from APR claiming that it makes too much heat to make it feasible. And this is with a larger crank pulley than APR ever sold. But the purpose of that test was to test and to see what different brand and build of intercooler and how they'd perform or if they would perform differently. And so knowing that the aftermarket performance intercooler was performing really well, we sent both of our intercoolers back to the company and the stock one was remade. And Brian sent out his, he had two Maggie intercoolers. He sent both his as well. And so we got three back. So they're all upgraded to this new one now. Now, <clears throat> so at this point, we got our new intercoolers in, and Brian and I were both doing testing and logging on both of our Maggies with different pulley ratios, still in the winter months. But that's where some when we were working on, we were interested in seeing what pulley ratios kind of work for each season, with how much our Canadian winter DA fluctuates for to our summer DA here also up at altitude. there is less or more air depending. Less in the summer, more in the winter. Traction is definitely an issue in the, in the winter with all the snow. So that then changes how much the bypass does or doesn't open with, this, with the more aggressive pulley ratios. So we went all the way up to 2.94. That was with, uh, for myself, the 194 still, that's always stayed the same, and uh, a 66 mil upper. So in the winter, our bypasses were opening at near, about near the 20% mark, so there was a lot of hot compressed air that was getting circulated back into the, uh, into the inlet of the supercharger, 
uh, not great, not great, especially not great for IETs. So more air, more boost, more airflow. Uh, so actually so much that the ECU is actually getting maxed out on the math calculation at 1389. Then in turn, <laughs> with the bypass open, the IETs kept climbing and they wouldn't level off at this point. So I backed it off back down to 2.59 for the time being. So now it's come summertime, the springtime came and I was logging again. And I could see I wasn't even max I wasn't maxing out the, to the 1389. So then I dropped to the 70 mil upper pulley, another option that the Magnuson came with. It was the 75 and the 70 that we know that they came with in the kits. The 70 was an option, sorry. So with the DA climbing up a couple thousand, less air is being available, but something we were finding on those 93 logs was that the our direct injector spray time was getting awfully close to that limit, that seven millisecond limit <clears throat> while trying to maintain pressure. It was around the six millisecond mark, so that's a ways off still. And I also know like the E40 file with that upgraded piston, it, the, the pressure request for your high pressure fuel pump is quite a bit higher than the regular pump gas files. So we had that to add to, to our benefit. But knowing that we were getting close and wanting to run the E40 file come summertime, like what I'm on right now, we kind of needed to make sure that we we're going to have that supplemental fuel. So I opted for meth injection. So I've been running that now for a little while and doing a bunch of fine tuning. Before I got the meth injection running though, like man, I, I just have to say I'm so impressed with the Maggie. Like it's, it feels like a, I'm just, I'm just so impressed with the Maggie. It rock and rolls. And I did some uh, friendly polls with some friends on a dual pulley 034 car. Check this out. Both of those were on 93, and I was on the 70 mil upper at that point. So big thank you to jean Me from DNT Performance out of Laval, Quebec, for sourcing me a CH3 Snow Performance Kit and helping me get it set up and installed remotely, I might add. Uh, I also added some solenoid, uh, solenoid uh, from Prometh, and then Brian was instru instrumental in the install. So I wanted a stealthy install, and he got me that. I, I wanted something that was as hidden as possible, and currently the only thing you can see is a, let's call it an IET sensor in my intake. So he welded that in, fit that in, um, and then it even underneath my rain cowl underneath the hood between that for that secondary firewall. We moved things around a little bit, didn't cut anything, didn't cut any plastic, and was managed, and we managed to sneak the pump and the tank in there totally hidden away. And yet, like I've got to remove the rain cowl every time I go to fill it up, but I wanted that, so mission accomplished. So that's where the Maggie sits right now for mods. As summertime's approaching now, I've been swapping down pulley sizes. Now I've got to now I've got to go down to the 66 mil pulley and try that. I'm still I've still been on the 70 mil, but that's kind of the only way I can combat the DA right now. And with the meth kit 
been fiddling with it quite a bit to make sure I run it ideally. If you've uh, followed the channel, you know that I had a dyno video of a bunch of 3.0T friends at that dual pulley and beyond mark. That was a super fun day. Big shout out to my friends who showed up that day. The Maggie in the A6 was dynoed that day, but I wanted to show that in this video. Let's, let's, I'll sh here, let's show the dyno video. Okay, so now we're gonna dyno my A6. As you guys know, it's got the Magnuson, the 1740 blower. I, I've got my meth injection on right now. Currently I'm running a snow uh, number four nozzle. And I'm on the E40 file, 034 TCU as well. Uh, Merc Racing Heat Exchanger 194 blower. Nothing's changed there, so let's see what she does. Got the Maggie dynode, 551 and 557. Pretty happy with that. That's we did the math based on some of the trap speeds that I've tested on it already, and it puts it about 15% drive loss. So, 650 at the crank, 550 at the wheels. So, be excited to see come drag season what we can do for times, and uh, maybe some further optimization. I'm pretty sure that's coming. So, and I did 558 call it 560 and so it was interesting because I looked at the log that I had done on there and I wasn't even making full boost I wasn't maxing out the 1389 and then also looking at my intake it was restrictive I had too much of a delta in between the atmospheric pressure and the pressure at the mouth of the supercharger so that wasn't ideal so pulley intake and meth still got to tweak those was I happy with the 560 yeah. I hope you enjoyed this update video. I'm sorry I didn't film the whole development process of the winter months and all the testing and the fabricating stuff we've been doing. Um, I'm sorry it is what it is. We didn't do it. I didn't do it. So thank you for watching and following along with Maggie Journey. I appreciate it and I'll see you guys next video. Peace. I think these guys are going to go fast. <laughs>